Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is Lily and today I am going to go over this painting. The painting that almost broke me. And from here on out, it's totally sent me down a spiral of what type of paint I should be using, what type of medium I should be using, am I really using gouache, is this really going to be the medium that I go to. Oh my goodness, I think this painting was almost like a test but anyways this is an acrylic painting and now normally I do gouache now here's the thing I have ma not mastered but I have you know learned a couple things here and there with gouache and I feel comfortable with gouache and that's great but for some reason I decided to do acrylic I decided to try acrylic this time and I know the reason why the reason why is because i really like the satin finish of acrylic rather than the matte finish of gouache i also always have trouble photographing gouache for some reason it never turns out right i don't like the patchy look of it and quite frankly when it comes to photographing i prefer either watercolor or acrylic and i've never tried oil so there's that so let me just go back a little and let you know what type of materials I'm using. So I'm using my standard materials that I normally use, but I'm using the acrylic of Windsor & Newton. It's a artist, no, I'm sorry, it's not an artist acrylic, it's a Galleria, I believe. Um, it's the Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylics. And I had very, very much mixed feelings about this. Part of it was because the brown, as you can see here when I'm doing the hat, was transparent or translucent. And I hated that. I may need translucent browns at some points when I'm glazing over things, but I use browns a lot to cover over things or to make a standard base for it. So this was so frustrating to go back and forth. The other thing is the consistency of this paint is like sticky. And I've used acrylic paints before. I haven't used a variety of them to be honest with you. But let me tell you something. I've used the Crafts. I'll put it down here. <laughs> the Crafts acrylic paints. The Folklores. The... Um... I believe it's craft smart actually yeah i've used those and those have happened to be a lot better feeling and a lot better of an opacity so i think that was part of it the acrylics themselves were not the best acrylics but this was such a struggle i often found myself covering things and like i would <laughs> i'm sorry i just got slapped i just got slapped by my cat hold on Okay, no cats were harmed in the making of this video. I was just moving my hands as I'm talking and the cat happened to be nearby and I guess he thought I was trying to hit him. <laughs> or he thought I was trying to like mess with him. <laughs> Anyways, back to this. Okay, so I found myself kind of um, going over and over again over the hat and it was sticky so sometimes I would rub off the paint that I already did because I was just not letting it have time to dry or anything like that which was infuriating but yes um the finish however as you're looking right now is like a satin finish and I really like that so that that was a plus for it but here is the other part I thought the skin was gonna be easy right no the skin was yet another nightmare you know it's been such a long time since I've used acrylics that I totally did not understand how to use them and even now I still don't understand how to use them because I only did this painting and I really kind of gave up with the acrylic medium and then just went back to gouache which is another story in its own check out the next week's video where I'm just gonna talk about the chaos of just going back and forth between mediums but yeah this was kind of hard for me to do the face um i didn't really have the colors planned out i kind of just went over things and 
I had too much pink going on and then I wanted to neutralize it a little bit to make it more of a flesh tone and it, it was just covering up like with a gray tone so that also made it kind of frustrating and then you'll see that on top I do like a shade where the rim of the hat is right there and that was also a pain to kind of like just mix and I was kind of like what in the world did I do so yeah that was very frustrating but it's just that acrylics uh, acrylics to me is stunning to visually look at and to photograph I think it photographs great I think the paper that I use the canvas paper is like a linen paper which also I really like the texture of it but um, to work with it's kind of labor intensive it's just like the and again this is the paints that I've used maybe there's better paints I know there's better paints like golden and stuff like that but I don't know if necessarily this changes the fact that acrylics are kind of heavy duty in comparison to other mediums such as gouache and such as watercolor um it feels labor intensive to just stroke after stroke you know like push your way through the blend whereas gouache is a different monster to blend but watercolor is just like you hit it with a little fairy tale pinch on the paper and it's just it, it just transforms into this blended masterpiece for you so yeah <laughs> that was a struggle so i wanted to make her hair like an auburn right and i started to use the burnt sienna for the winter and newton and again translucent very translucent and i i honestly if i'm gonna buy a set i'd rather a set either be all translucent or all opaque tell me what i'm getting myself into because i want to know also i just generally prefer acrylics that are opaque and the reason being is because you can use a medium like a blending medium to make it translucent so you really in essence don't necessarily need a translucent color but yes so now i'm going into the eyes or am i am i going into the eyes no i'm going into the nose yeah the nose um you know what this whole like acrylic thing you know really affirmed my thought process that you really need to master a paint a medium um before you can actually start to necessarily enjoy the painting that you're doing and i want to apologize of because of the glare of the sun here oh my goodness like <laughs> you know it kind of like makes me think of western but at the same time it's not good for you guys to you know be able to see what's going on with the painting so i do want to apologize about that um i worked on this like relentlessly that day i was obsessed with trying to get this right so i didn't give it a chance and wait on or sleep on it for the next day that's why you're getting the sunset in this lighting and that's also something i kind of want to talk about it's just like i don't know if anybody else or if everybody who is an artist or serious you know really serious about their art if they are as obsessed <laughs> as i get i mean i'm telling you if i don't have a good day with my painting it literally um it literally will trigger down to the rest of the day the rest of the day for me will be very stressful and hectic for me the way that i respond to things will also be in a stressed manner or maybe agitated and i really need to work on that i really do because you know what my family and the people around me do not deserve that from me they deserve positivity they deserve to not be held liable for the things that <laughs> go on in my little artist nook so yeah i i don't know comment down below if you can relate to the frustration that you get and how it affects you throughout the rest of the day it's the same thing when i have a good painting when i have a good painting i'm just elated it's like i'm on cloud nine i'm just going about my day everything's great it doesn't matter like enjoy the moment be mindful this cup of tea is so wonderful this starbucks coffee is just great they added the right amount of sugar you know it's like it's a awesome day but i cannot let that i cannot let my art 
consume me or become my identity because that's what happens it I, it becomes my identity and i'm literally so triggered <laughs> by what i'm doing that it's almost like what has become of me that i'm here getting frustrated for the rest of the day my day is bad because a painting didn't go right there's going to be a lot of times when the painting doesn't go right and i need to be able to stop and compartmentalize that moment and just leave it there and come back to it later on also another reason why it's good to do that is because when you do come back to it you have a fresh mind and you're not having these lingering thoughts throughout the day about that painting you allow yourself to rest you allow that issue to rest and then you come back to it with a fresh mind so yeah that's a little uh rant about how i got frustrated with this but yeah let's keep going So now at this point of the painting, I have the background that I need to work on and I have the little uh, armored thingy that she has in front of her that you will see what it is. You know, it's a cowboy theme. It's, you know, but anyways, yeah. So after this, it became a lot easier for me. Things were a lot smoother because the biggest issues happened to be the largest sections, which was the hat and the face. I, aside from using acrylics, really need to learn how to paint and color. But let, let me better say this. I need to learn how to better color my portrait faces. There is something going on that it's kind of iffy in the sense that in the blush areas, there is something a little bit, I'm not doing something quite right. And I need to figure that out. And again, I need to give myself time to figure that out. Um, I can't expect myself to be amazing at something that requires time and skill to do. I, and that's something that I say it in my mind and I, I say I say it, but I, to be honest, I don't truly believe it myself because if I did, I wouldn't react the way that I do to, you know, not getting things right on the first try. And just back to the whole ordeal with acrylics, like i said i love the versatility of acrylics in the sense that you can paint large you can paint small you can paint illustrations you can paint fine art you can go for a lot of different styles whereas other types of mediums sometimes require an extra effort to change up either the sizing or the style that you want to achieve with it that being said it is a little bit inconvenient as far as for travel yes i have a wet on um, wet palette or stay wet palette sorry i have a stay wet palette and it works great but just honestly it's not substantial for traveling really unless you are very committed to you know painting acrylics out outside it's just not sustainable so i think that I'm trying to find a medium that not only do I enjoy the process, but that I enjoy the outcome of it, that it's also convenient and sustainable, that I can travel with it, that I can carry it in a small case, that I can just, you know, use it at whim without having to do a lot of prep. And the thing about acrylics is that, yeah, you can, you know, put some tubes into the wet palette and just start painting, but you need water to clean your brushes and you need water for other stuff but you really need to clean your brushes well otherwise they will get ruined very very easily and you have to constantly be aware as well that you have to dip your brush in water so that it doesn't dry out on the the paint doesn't dry out on the brush so that's one thing that i have to say about watercolor and gouache that they are amazing in that they're water soluble and i honestly i'm trying to find different ways to put varnish over watercolor and gouache so that it is permanent and you don't have to worry about you know water get, spilling water over it or having to put it behind a glass frame or anything like that so that it is as permanent as acrylic paint 
but yeah it's it's a beautiful medium it really is i love the shine of it i love the plasticky look of it it sounds weird but honestly like it's just it's stunning i i i don't think that gouache in person or in film or not film but in photos is anything compared to acrylics and from what i hear oil is even 10 times better than that but oil is another beast that i just don't want to deal with right now like i have my set of challenges i do not want to create more problems with myself even though maybe one day i will try oils and we'll see how that experience is um i think it will be great for blending and i do love to blend so that that's great but the the level of inconvenience that oils are is like wow a whole nother level that being said i really do like oil pastels oil pastels is amazing because it's like so versatile you could take it anywhere you could use a little bit of linseed oil and make it into like an oil um but it it's just it has that beautiful rich vibrancy that that is just so stunning to me you can create a lot of texture and abstract with it but you can also create illustrations and even if if you're proficient enough you can even do small details with oil pastels um and i did try oil pastels for a while i did do a couple portraits with oil pastels i didn't film them however and i don't have oil pastels anymore um and again i'm trying to stick to like hone a medium before even trying out different types of you know art mediums out there or trying ones that i've already tried before so yeah and here we go now i'm taking the tape off i was just rambling for so long i didn't even realize i'm finished with this and this is the painting guys this is the cowgirl painting i wanted to do a series with this but I don't know if I can touch acrylic for a good amount of time. By the way, I just want to say that thank you so much for sticking around and thank you for those who have subscribed. Thank you for having the patience to listen to me ramble about things. And I hope you do continue to stick around. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you continue to paint. See you. Bye.